for those of you who don't know me, my name is Colton Willie. Um, some of you I really recognize, Malachi, currently, so I actually work as a, as a public school teacher. I'm actually a middle school teacher, okay? Uh, and I teach seventh grade, and Malachi is actually currently one of my students, so there you go, okay? He's the best teacher. So, yeah, there we go, perfect. But Malachi, I swear that Malachi's not a plant. He was not paid to say that, just so everybody knows, okay? Now, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Listen up. Now, that being said, I'm stoked to be here because honestly, like I said, middle school is kind of my jam. Okay, I've been a middle school teacher for seven years. And in my time as a middle school teacher, I've been fortunate enough to pick up on some middle school lingo. And I'm going to test that middle school lingo with you. I'm curious how many of you have ever been, oops. Have ever been sus? Who's ever been sus before? <laughs> who, who knows what I'm talking about here? Among us. Who's played Among Us? All right. So point proven. Uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty common with middle schoolers. Um, this is pretty old school, so forgive me. Who in here has ever been a Fortniter? Yeah! Now, see... Now, here's the deal. As a teacher, I figured out that I kind of, like, middle school goes in trends. Fortnite was like the coolest thing in sliced bread three years ago. And now my middle schoolers come in and they're like, Fortnite is dead. Okay? Maybe it is, maybe it's not. How many in the last week have said, bruh? Who's ever done that? Yeah, you know it's true. You know you do it every day. You know how many times I'll be up there? Malachi's probably done it, but he's probably better at hiding it. I'll be sitting there teaching. I'll say, and today's homework is, and you can just see it. Bruh. <laughs> kind of like that, right? Um, who in here has seen a meme in the last week? Oh. All right. All right. Uh, now, here's the deal. Okay? Here's the deal. As you can see, I spent a lot of time in middle schoolers. Probably too much. See all these gray hairs? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the deal. I spend so much time with middle schoolers that I've got you guys pegged pretty well. Okay. And there's a couple things that I can say about middle schoolers. Here it is. See if you agree with some of these things. This time, middle school, is a time of transition. Transition meaning change. Okay. Uh, more homework. Yeah, okay. More, more sports, more sports. Okay. Trying to slowly wiggle away from your parents. Hormones. Pimples. And overall, more freedom. Okay? In, in every sense, I, you guys are a good crowd. We're going to enjoy this. Okay? In every sense, middle school is ultimately where boys. Become men. Men. I, f I try to find the manliest picture possible, okay? Now, in every sense, excuse me, middle schools where boys become men. And like all men, when we're making this change into manhood, basically, it comes with challenges. With every new freedom, which you're gaining a lot of them in this life right now, come opportunities to grow closer to our Lord Jesus Christ, right? You have more opportunities to do that, okay? But there are also great dangers in this time. And dangers that if you're not careful can completely stunt your walk with God. And maybe even have extreme consequences in your life. Now, today, boys, we're going to be talking about purity. Yay. Okay, we're talking about purity. Now, here's the deal. We kind of messed around a little bit at the beginning, but I'm going to tell you right now, I will not be mincing words in this message. I'm going to be completely honest with you. I'm going to be completely real with you. And I can say, at least if I was sitting in your shoes, this might be the most important message you have heard in a long time. Now, that sounds like a high praise, right? It might not be comfortable for you to hear this message. Some of you might not have a clue what I'm talking about. 
Nevertheless, men, you must hear this message. Take it from me. You must hear this message because I guarantee you that every single man in this room right now will at some time struggle with sexual purity. I can almost guarantee it. So with no further ado, if you have a Bible, go ahead and do me a favor and turn to Matthew 5.8. Go and turn to Matthew 5.8. So of course, if we're talking about purity, the question must be, what does it mean to be pure? And why is it important? Okay, well, before that, let's jump into God's Word. This is the words of Jesus himself. Okay, it's what Jesus first started preaching to people when he first kind of came on the scene. Uh, very simple, Matthew 5, 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. I have a question for you middle schoolers. Do you desire to see God? I hope so. Do you desire to see your Maker, the one who sewed you together in the womb, the one that controls all space, all time, every atom, every single thing that we see, hear, smell, and taste, God made it. Do you desire to see the Almighty One, the All-Powerful, the All-Knowing, the Creator of all things? Do you desire to have a relationship with this God? My hope is that you do. Now, there are some of you in here tonight that might not even be aware of God, who He is, and what He has done. And I want to tell you right now, and I want to ask you, I should say, would you like to? Okay, those games are fun. You guys did a good job. Go boys, okay? Yeah. But if, if youth group is only about games, then you are missing the point of youth group. It is only to know the living God, He who created you. And there's some of you who don't know him. Would you like to? If, if so, you need to know his son, Jesus. Now, we're going to talk about purity, but if you're stuck on that point of the message, you need to think about that. You have to start there, okay? But mainly, I'm going to be talking a lot to those of you who know Jesus, those of you at least that confess him. Hopefully, you desire to have a deep relationship with God. And as you can see, what is this verse say about having a deep relationship with God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. The reality is, we can't have a close relationship with our maker unless we are pure. Because since God is holy, pure, perfect, we can never be perfect. But we must, you know, be pure. We must live pure lives. We must live holy lives, okay? So, of course, what does purity mean? Well, if you define purity... I looked up in the dictionary. Here's what it says. Unmixed with anything else, like pure gold. Free from dust, dirt, or taint, like pure spring water. It means to be spotless, to be stainless. And I want to show you something. Let me know what this is. Kind of see it. Diamond ring. It's a diamond ring. This is not Rachel's wedding ring, because that would get me in trouble. Don't do that, okay? Uh, diamond ring. Also, I can never afford a ring that big. Holy buckets. That'd be like three months salary, or three months, three years salary, okay? Um, it's just a fake, <laughs> okay? But here's the deal. Diamond rings, precious, pure. When I look at a diamond ring, it screams purity to me. Does anyone know how diamonds are made? How does one get a sparkly rock like this? Go ahead, Jackson. What's that? Excellent, Okay. Very good, okay? Diamonds are created, there's carbon that's deep below the Earth's crust, and over time, that carbon is smashed constantly, extreme pressure, until it forms a diamond, okay? Diamonds, before they can ever go on a ring and look beautiful and pure, they must go through a process, a molding. By definition, nothing is pure unless it's been tried and tested. That goes for you, too. That's true for you too. Nothing is pure unless it's been through the process that makes it pure, okay? Here's another verse for you. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 3 through 5. Here it is. It is God's will that you should be sanctified. Anyone know what sanctified means? Want to tell me what that might mean? Anyone know? Go ahead. Excellent. That's the actual meaning, right? Set apart. Sanctified means that when we believe in Jesus... Over the course of our life, we never are perfect, but God makes us more like Jesus. He sanctifies us. He sets us apart, which means our lives are going to 
change. They're not going to stay the same. Very good. Okay, now when I look at this verse, so sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Not in passionate lust like the pagans who don't know God. There's three observations I can make about sexual purity in this passage. First of all, uncontrollable lust. The inability to control how we look at girls. That's not the sign of a Christian. That's a sign of someone who doesn't, who doesn't know God. Not in passionate luck like the, like the pagans who don't know God. So if we have this uncontrollable lust and we, we, are not, we don't care about it, we just do it anyways, that's what non-believers do. Sexual morality is a blemish, okay? Each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that's holy and honorable, okay? We need to avoid sexual immorality. If we're talking about purity, okay, this diamond ring, if there's a little spot in it, Rachel probably wouldn't like it as much, okay? Now, Rachel, luckily, she probably wouldn't care, but ultimately, there's going to be a blemish on the ring, okay? That is what sexual sin is, a blemish on our purity. And finally, if it isn't enough, it is the Lord's will that we fight against this blemish. So God desires me, he desires you to be pure in order to be in fellowship with him. Doesn't mean that you're going to be perfect, but if you want to be close to God, you want to have a deep, lasting, healthy relationship with the Lord, we must be pure. But you guys, I mean, come on. You're pure enough, right? You're not actively approaching girls. You're maybe not doing, you know, sexual things. You might be aware of some kids who are, but, but you're not, right? You're good. Wrong. Dead wrong. So what I want to talk about before we jump into the next couple of messages is I want to talk about my own story a little bit, okay? Now, see, the reason why I am honored to be here talking with you guys about sexual purity is because in my own testimony and how I came to know Christ, it is a central part. I have struggled with sexual purity for my entire life, okay? And I want to give you encouragement in God's word through Jesus, Okay? So let's define it. What does it mean to be, to, have, to be sexually immoral? Well, I'll just tell you my story. When I was a boy, maybe you can relate to this, some of you, I knew girls in my class, and they were just friends, right? Just hung out with them. No big deal, you know, I sat by them, and, you know, we, we kind of talked about stuff we were doing in class and all that stuff. Then I got a little bit older, okay? I was interested in girls. I was like, hmm, I wouldn't mind talking to girls more than I do now. But not in a sexual way. I wasn't, it wasn't, you know, that kind of stuff. But then as I got even older, I wanted to be close to girls in a sexual way. I wanted to be close to them. I wanted to touch them. wanted to be with them. Okay? And if you're shaking your head, well, guess what? You're just not there yet. Okay? But you will. Now, Jesus said this. Jesus said this. Okay? Jesus said that it's not... When, you, when we go off and we're doing, you know, inappropriate things with women... That's sin. But so is when you look at a woman lustfully. Whenever you even look at a girl with an intention to be on her, to be with her in an inappropriate way, that is sin. So I was walking in this as a kid. You know, I, I do every once in a while. I, I had a desire to be close to girls. Finally, one time when I was 12 years old, who knows in 12 years old? Finally, when I was in middle school, when I was in middle school, listen, please, when I was in middle school, I was surfing through the web one day, just, you know, just doing what you guys probably do too, and I came across a pornographic image, an inappropriate image, an image that showed too much of a girl than what I should have been looking at. And from that moment on, I was hooked. That desire that I had as a kid, now it was being fed and I remember, uh, I would, it was like almost every day, I would look at these inappropriate images. This is my own life here, okay? And I just keep going deeper and deeper and deeper, right? I remember one day, you ready? I remember one day my dad caught me in the act. Can you imagine that? You know what my dad said to me? He said, my dad's at that point wasn't a Christian. This is what he said. Son, this is just what men do. It's just what men do. Let me 
fix what my dad said to me by saying this to you. This is not what men do. This is not natural what men do. You want to know why I'm getting so frustrated? Because that statement from my dad ruined my life for many, many, many years. It made me addicted to these inappropriate images. This is not what men do. My dad was flat wrong. You must know that. You must know that. Okay? So what do you notice about my story with pornography? Did I just fall into it? Did I? When you actually look at the story? At first, it was just a glance at a girl. Then it was like starting to really like maybe get intimate with girls. Then it was looking at inappropriate images of girls. I want to say something to you guys. Okay, when I went into you know, this inappropriate imagery, it, was not a, it wasn't a sudden thing. It was a slow, gradual slide into that evil habit. One that started long before I ever found that link. Before I ever clicked that button, it had already started. And so that goes to our main passage for today. Please, I beg you, eat these words up. Here's what it says. God blesses those who patiently endure testing, just like this diamond. We are called to be tested to check our purity, right? Patiently endure testing and temptation. Afterwards, they will receive the crown of life that God promised to those who love him. When we go against our sexual tendencies and these desires for girls, you know, that's, a, that's showing God you love him, right? Um, as we continue, and remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. And he never tempts anyone else. Now listen. Here's the heavy hitter. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow... It gives birth to, say it, death, death, death. We live in a culture today, guys, where we don't think that way, okay? And do you see it? Is there a slide in this verse? A slide into sin, do you see it? Starts off in my mind, goes into an action, goes into death. Sexual impurity doesn't just happen, okay? It's something we have to fight about. We have to fight it at the very source, okay? Who in here, I'm just curious real quick, who in here has ever fallen and got a cut on their body? Who's ever had that happen? Wow, okay. You guys need to be more careful, okay? Uh, <laughs> careful here, okay? I'm going to go see the nurse afterwards, okay? Um, when you get a cut on your body, what do you do? What's your mom do right away? You go, I hope you don't pass out. What do you do? Yeah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You got to, probably the first thing to do is a Band-Aid, maybe when you get home. You're going to clean that cut. Why do we clean it? Go ahead. Thank you for raising your hand. That's awesome. Good. If I get a cut on my skin, our bodies are full of bacteria, okay? They can get in there, and basically it starts to be infected. And if I didn't clean it, what eventually would happen is that bacteria would get in there, it would fester, it would decay, and I would probably get ma massively sick. Some of you are doing that with your sin, just like I was. You're letting it fester, just like an open, decaying wound. So, but it, death, death, Colton, come on. Well, that's what God says. But let me go a little deeper here. Let me give you some statistics. Malachi knows I love statistics, okay? My students are like, oh. Okay, 47% of families in the United States, so half of every family, report that pornography, inappropriate images of women and men looking at them, is a problem in their home. Half of every single American home says that looking at these images is bad. 56%, so another half, of American divorces... You guys probably know, maybe you've struggled with divorce. Maybe that's happened in your life. Maybe you know friends that have struggled. It's a terrible thing. 56% of American divorces involve someone watching pornography. 70% of Christian youth pastors, think about Pastor Jared over here, report that they have led at least one teen, or they've had at least one teen come to them about pornography in the last 12 months. 
Right now, uh, the last couple months, we've been talking about COVID, right? Wear a mask, get your vaccine, all that stuff, okay? It's a pandemic, it's an epidemic, all that stuff. This is a worse pandemic. This is a more deadly pandemic. COVID might make you cough, you might ultimately die. Sexual sin wants your soul. And it will not settle for anything less. I'll tell you from my own life, you know, as I continue to dive into, you know, inappropriate imagery, looking at girls lustfully, wanting them, you know what happened to my life? I became more lazy because all I cared about was getting, getting to that image. I became more disrespectful towards women. When you were in the auditorium, you had other ladies on the other side and you guys are having a great time. Men, just remember, boys to men. Our job is to care for those women, to love those women, to serve those women, not to lust after them as if they're a piece of meat, which is what I did for years. It's much harder to love others because when you look at a sexual image, you know what you're doing? You're loving yourself. That's the only person you love. You love yourself. That's the only thing you love is yourself when you look at an image. And the heavy hitter, it will ruin any closeness you have with God. Period. You can come to youth group a thousand times, but if you're still living in that impurity of sexual sin, you can't grow a relationship with God. I know because I've lived it. So where does the slide start? Look at the text. Where does the slide start? Temptation comes from our own desires which entice us and draw us away. Temptation, that's talking about your head, your thoughts, okay? Uh, this slide down to death starts in our minds. When I, first look at a, when I first glance at a girl, I have an opportunity to say no. When I first think about being intimate with a girl, I have an opportunity to say no. When I think about images from a movie, video game, or website that it depicts women in an inappropriate way, I can say no to that. Guys, this is the testing that makes you pure. You will be tested in this. I guarantee it. How are you doing in your test? Are you letting your wound fester? So we're talking about battle here. Oh, who likes battle? Who likes that kind of stuff? Yeah, man, okay. We're doing battle in our brains. It's the most important battle that you'll ever fight. So the question is, what do we do to win this battle? Against those images, against those thoughts, against those feelings towards girls. How do we win this? Well, first of all, you have to take up the sword of God's word you have to take up the sword of God's word, okay? Um, if you go into a battle, I'm a nerd, so bear with me. I'm also a history teacher. If you go into battle without a sword, what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. You're, You're going to die, okay? Many of you are doing that. Or worse off, you're going into the battle with a wooden sword that's useless. What is this sword I'm talking about? It's this. The Bible literally calls itself a sword. Hebrews chapter 4, I believe. Sharper than a double-edged blade, right? This is Psalm 119.9. How can a young person stay pure? By obeying your word. What weapon are you taking into battle? Are you taking in Snapchat? Are you taking in TikTok? Are you taking in YouTube? Um, who's ever heard this saying, you are what you eat? Yeah. You are what you eat. Yep, that's, pretty, that's, that's a, it's a pretty big truth. Uh, Rachel and I right now are trying to do a diet. Rachel's been doing a very good job. I've been doing terrible. Good job. Terrible. Good job. Good job. Good job. Okay, good job. thank you, thank you. Now, here's the good news. Here's the good news. Rachel keeps me accountable, but she's definitely doing better, okay? Now, why do we do diets? Well, because we are what you eat. If I eat potato chips, ice cream, and candy, and I want to be more active, more physically fit, ain't going to happen because what you put into your body 
is not adequate, it's not good enough to support your active lifestyle. In much the same way, what you think about is what you spend the most time doing. What you think about is what you spend the most time doing, okay? Don't believe me? Okay, with Snapchat, TikTok, and YouTube, how often in those things are maybe women dressed inappropriately? How often in those things could that lead you down that slide of sexual sin? If temptation comes from our own desires, guys, we have to be willing to feed our brain with truth, not junk. Okay, you got to replace that stuff with the word. Now, that stuff's okay if your parents allow it and everything, it's fine. But what are you spending your most time on? That's going to make a big difference on what you think about and who you think about. Okay? How often are you God's word? Are you reading God's word? Are you filling up your head with truth and not trash? Second application. Don't charge into battle. Don't charge into danger. Um, North Polk uh, Middle School, we every once in a while, back before COVID, we did these little activities at the end of the, the school day, basically. One of them was dodgeball. Who loves dodgeball? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dodgeball day. I love dodgeball. So we had, a, we had a game, basically, where it was, um, it, you know, it, it was every homeroom, basically. We call them Comet Times. They would all have their own teams. Uh, this was a couple years ago. Every team played. The final team got to play against the teachers. <laughs> They're going down, okay? Or at least I thought. And I went into that game with the, you know, with the, the teachers against the students, and, uh, you know, I was getting stretched. I'm, I think I had my tie on my head and just stupid things. I remember I, I grabbed the first dodgeball I saw, and I just sprinted at the other team. Ah! Like, battle cry. Like these guys. What do you think happened to me? I got out immediately. I was probably in that game for 10 seconds. What does God say about our sin? What does it say about us? Here's what it says. Run from sexual sin. Run away. No other sin clearly affects the body as this one does. For sexual immorality is a sin against your own body. Our body is a gift from God. When you sexually sin, it's, you're literally polluting that gift. Okay? But look what it says, that top one. Run from sexual sin. Run from it. Now what do I mean by that? Some of you are doing what I did in the dodgeball game. You're just charging headlong in the battle with no sword, much less. You see a pretty girl, and you take a little look. You already lost the battle. You've already lost at that point, okay? You're setting yourself up for failure. You see a link on a website, you click it. That battle's lost, okay? You do one more swipe on your phone, okay? Guys, if we put ourselves in situations where we're more likely to think that about girls, you probably will. Don't put yourself in situations where you're more likely to fall into this. Okay? Another one. When I think of this, I always think of the second glance rule. <laughs> this is weird, but you're going to have to deal with it, okay? Um, sometimes, you know, I'll see a pretty girl or I'll, I'll you know, and I'm married, guys. I still struggle with it, okay? I'll see a pretty girl and I'll, I'll, oh, well, she's pretty. You know what I say? I literally say, be gone, Satan. <laughs> I legitimately say that. Can you say it with me? Be gone, Satan. Sounds pretty cool, okay? Now, here's the deal, okay? That sounds really silly and dumb, but you know what that does? That's where that thought's coming from. It's coming from the enemy, okay? Satan, the enemy, of God and his people, you guys. He wants us to take that second look. He wants us to click on the link. You have to fight it right away, immediately, okay? Next up, this is probably one of the most important things. Don't go into battle alone. I'm a history teacher. The ancient Greeks, when they fought, they fought in a formation called the phalanx. Giant spears, and they'd be shoulder to shoulder with these huge shields. And... It could withstand any charge. It could withstand any force for thousands of years. That's the way Alexander the Great conquered the world for the most part. A lot of you 
need to take up your shield. You need to stand by your brothers more. Now, what do I mean by that? Look at what it says up here, Proverbs 28, 13. People who conceal their sin will not prosper. But if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. So what do I mean by that? Okay? You're sitting here right now, listen to this message, and you know that you struggle with this. But you refuse to tell anybody. What does the verse say? You won't prosper. You can't win that battle. You're not strong enough. I'm not strong enough. Okay? Men, when it comes to sexual purity, looking at girls inappropriately, we need teammates to come alongside us and protect us against the lies that enter this brain. Okay? I myself struggled, like I said, with pornography for most of my life when I first watched it. You know when it started getting better? When I started being honest about it. I didn't hide it. Even Maybe it's not pornography with you. Maybe you just struggle to look at girls. Or maybe you're just not really sure how to think about girls. Talk to somebody else. Talk to another man. You're not meant to do it by yourself. God doesn't desire that for you. Talk to someone else. I know it's embarrassing. I know it's awkward. Middle school's all about being awkward, right? Isn't your soul worth it? Is your soul worth it? Is it? Because if it's so, you'd be willing to tell somebody. When I was willing to tell somebody, that's when God started to do a work in my heart. He started to take some of this away, okay? The last one, and the most important one, you must truly, deeply believe the gospel. You must believe the gospel if you're going to win this battle, okay? Um, we talked about... Uh, Blessed are those who are pure of heart, for they will see God. Do you desire to see God? Yeah. Do you desire to know God? Yeah. Then you got to know his son. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. None may come to the Father except through me. Okay? Now, where am I going with this, okay? Um, will anyone in here, myself included, ever be perfectly pure? No, very good. Nice job. Yeah. It's not possible. We'll never be perfectly pure. We will someday, when we die and we go to heaven, if we know Jesus. But here's the deal. You know, we're always going to screw up. Some of you will still look at girls, even when you're not supposed to. And then you can confess and go to your brothers and talk about it. Get in God's word. That's awesome. Keep doing that, okay? You can read your Bible one million times, but you'll never be perfectly pure. You can run from sin and another sin will find you. If, you. if not sexual sin, then anger, jealousy, greed. We still need a lot of work, don't we? All of us. You can confess all your sins hundreds of times, but confession by itself, just saying, oh yeah, I screwed up. Sorry. That's not enough. Okay? We need to have a Savior. Even if we follow all the steps I just showed you, we will never be perfectly pure. Can't do it on our own. Not going to happen. Men, that Savior is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who came to live a perfect life. He was tempted. Jesus was tempted, but he never sinned. They nailed him on that cross, and when they nailed him on that cross, you know what Jesus did? He took in all that sin that I have, all those sexual views all those pornographic images inappropriate images he takes all that takes it on himself and he, he says you know what i've paid the debt for you i died the death that you deserve and i rose again to give you new life okay here's the last verse today this is a cherished verse for me when i was in the thralls of pornography this is something that saved my life many times if we claim to be without sin we deceive ourselves are you deceiving yourself? And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he, Jesus, is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And I love it. Purify us from all unrighteousness. Purify us from all unrighteousness. Okay? He purifies us. Even when we are still going to screw up, every time we confess, look what it says. It doesn't say some unrighteousness, a little unrighteousness. It says all of it. 
That's good news. That's really good news, okay? So as we kind of close here, I'm going to ask you the same question. Do you want to see God? Do you legitimately want to have a relationship with the living God? Then you must live pure lives. That's just part of the gig, guys. It's hard. You want to live pure lives? Believe the gospel. That Jesus died for you. He took on all that sin. Guys, we don't have any power over our own behavior until Jesus gives us that power. It's called the Holy Spirit, okay? You got to read God's word. You got to fill your mind with that because if it's other junk up there, it's going to get in the way. Number three, flee, run away. As soon as it approaches, get out of there. And the last one, confess your sin tonight if you need to. We got small group leaders here that would be more than happy to hear that and to come alongside you and be your phalanx, be your support system. Sound good, guys? All right, let's pray. (laughs) Father God, Lord, I pray for all these young men in this room right now, God. Lord Jesus, it's been a hard word for them. A little bit of shouting at them, Lord. But God, ultimately, you have love and grace for them. Lord Jesus, right now, if they know they struggle with this, if they know that they're impure, they're living impure lives, Lord, may they confess that to you. May they take on your grace. Lord Jesus, you say that you're going to wipe us clean of all unrighteousness. May they take that promise in. And God, I pray for their minds, God. May they flee from these things that desire their souls. May they get in your word, God. Fill their mind with truth. And may they confess it to brothers and come alongside them. Thank you, Lord, for just giving us your word. Walk with us, God. Just build us up in your grace and truth. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Nice job, fellas.